back to part two from Allegheny National Forest and I guess this is where we're gonna start so currently it is pouring rain it started raining around 9 30 last night and has not stopped yet it's uh, a little after 7 a.m. right now and I will say this the new sleeping bag worked out like a gem uh, kept me warm all night uh, take a look at the temperature real quick on the thermometer it says it's 45 in the tent which uh probably means it's about 30 outside um a little a little dampness in the tent but we stayed dry for the most part um i did the old hot water in a bottle trick last night threw it in the sleeping bag it worked until about uh, 6 a.m. when I don't know if I did it in my sleep or, or what happened, but I accidentally opened the bottle and ended up getting a little wet. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, I'm, I'm good. So, yeah, it wouldn't be a hike with Max Outdoors unless it, it rained. So we're going to pack up, hopefully not get too wet, and then we have another five miles to go until we get back to the truck. Um, the thing is, today is going to be pretty much all elevation it looks like on the map. Uh, I'll show you it right here. So we're going to go up. Uh, there's some hemlocks and boulders it says on the map. And then we will uh, meander our way across a creek or two before we get back to the truck. So hopefully the rain slows down here in the next couple minutes and uh, we get packed up without getting soaked. So I'll see you on the outside. just popped out of the tent and the first sight I seen is a pair of eagles you can see one up on the hill there it looks like he's about to land up in a tree yep there he goes and the other one I don't know where the other one went pretty cool oh there you go even some eagle noises oh look there's another one there's three of them <laughs> oh, wow. all right well the rain has slowed down quite a bit here which uh, will allow us to not get soaked but as you've seen in the other video, as soon as I popped out of the tent, we were greeted by three bald eagles. There's one still hanging up in the tree. And then I believe in front of me here, if you can make out the two dots in the middle of the uh, the cove there, I want to say those are loons, a male and a female loon. So that might be a new ID for the channel. Um, they the One has a white body with red eyes. The other one's a little darker, blackish gray with some red eyes. So I want to say they're loons. And then you can see some nice fog rolling off the surrounding hills here up along uh, Kinzu Lake or Allegheny Reservoir. But yeah, what a beautiful morning. Literally just feels like you're like in Alaska here. That's what I was saying to Chris yesterday, just wild. So how'd you sleep last night? I slept really good, surprisingly. Yeah. I didn't hear any weird noises. I know there <laughs> might've been some weird noises, but I didn't hear. I woke up, like I said, I probably woke up like once every two hours, I'd wake up for a couple of minutes and right back to sleep. Yeah, I mean, same with me. I'd wake up every uh, couple hours. 
Uh, like I said earlier, it sounded like a couple of deer came around my tent last night. It sounded like a bleat, like a bleat from a deer, unless Chris farted, but I doubt uh, that it would have traveled that far. So I'm gonna say it was probably a deer. And then I heard some coyote over on this hillside last night howling. And other than that, it was a pretty relaxing night, especially with the rain. Um, but yeah, we'll show you a little bit more views of the surrounding area as, we, as I'm talking another bald eagle flying over. That'd be cool to see him dive after one of these ducks. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get packed up. We got five miles to go. And uh, yeah, it should be an interesting day. A lot of elevation gain, I think. All right, just like that, camp is all packed up and perfect timing because it looks like we are about to get just blasted by another rainstorm moving through the area. So the next time you see us, we will probably be totally drenched. Well, it was a good home. Eagle. Here? Yep, I see him. Up in that tree. You saw a dead one? Yeah. All right, so one last look at the reservoir bald eagle was bidding us adieu and uh, we're gonna try and find our way out of here. The trail system down through the campground wasn't the greatest yesterday, so it might be a bit dicey trying to find our way out of here. The rain started to pick up again, but uh, hey, we're pretty grateful that it gave us an hour break to, to pack up. So we're gonna keep heading on down the trail and uh, hopefully we find the rest of the the morrison trail here so this is kind of just the, the campground area but we'll see you once we find the trail yeah, if you like mud and jaggers this is definitely the trail for you. No clue if we're even going the right way at this point. It rained for about I don't know, 10 hours, you think? Uh, it started at 9.30 and it's what, nine now? Yeah, so <laughs> so. about 12 hours. It's still raining a little bit, but. Well, you can tell we have really gained some elevation here within the last hour or so. And uh, if you missed last week's episode, I talked a little bit about the reservoir, also known as uh, Kinzu Lake. The Allegheny River was dammed back in the 60s, I believe, and uh, it was uh, quite a bit of controversy. A lot of the uh, Seneca Native Americans called this valley home. And uh, long story short, they ended up flooding a lot of their villages and hamlets, displacing hundreds of families and uh, kind of a slap in the face at the end. The Army Corps of Engineers said that the villages would be a flow issue for the newly built reservoir. So after they forcibly removed everybody out of the valley, they decided that uh, the best idea would be to burn down all their houses. So what we're looking at right now would have been probably about 10, I think it was 10, 10 villages at the bottom of this massive uh, reservoir, 130 foot deep and it extends all the way from Pennsylvania up to New York. And uh, to make the story even more sad, the Seneca Indians used to call Pennsylvania home. This was actually their last homestead. And after they were displaced, there are no longer any um, Seneca Indian Native Americans that live in Pennsylvania now. So another sad story when it comes to a flooding of a lake here in Pennsylvania. And also I should note that uh, they didn't just come out here and build the dam for fun. Um, it was in the name of flood control. Towns down uh, from the Allegheny River like Pittsburgh were constantly getting flooded. Uh, hurricanes came through the area and flooded many areas down below uh, south of here. So they built the dam in the name of flood control. And unfortunately, you know, a few villages and hamlets were displaced due to it. So yeah, I don't want to paint 
the Army Corps of Engineers in a bad light, but that was the main reason they needed to build a dam to save cities and towns downstream from uh, the Allegheny River. Well, we are still getting some nice views of the lake, and I will say this, the elevation gain isn't too crazy. It's pretty uh, gradual uphill, but we're starting to get into some of these boulders now. Very uh, vibrant colored green mosses all over these probably glacial thrown boulders all over the hillside here. Check that out. It's some of the most vibrant moss I've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, pretty much scattered all over this hillside. And on the other, you have uh, Kinsey Lake. All right, well, the higher and higher we get in elevation here, it seems like the more and more boulders we run into. I'm sure this area is probably Rattlesnake City in the summer months. Um, a lot of these look to be sandstone, and I'm guessing a good majority, if not all of these, were probably thrown up here in the last ice age. So a pretty unique area. Haven't really made it to the hemlocks yet, so this might not even be the main boulder area, but yeah, you definitely want to watch your step here, stepping in on these leaves. Really easy to fall into a hole here and twist your ankle up, so. But yeah, let's continue to climb up the side of Kinzu Lake here. All right, well, we are continuing to climb up along the banks of the reservoir here. A nice, moody, mystical morning here in March. You can see the fog rolling off of the hills off in the distance as uh, we plummet on down to Allegheny Reservoir just below us. But uh, I did want to point this out. It looks like we're on an old access road. You can see pretty wide open compared to the trail off to the left. And it looks like this road, or old road, plummets on down to the reservoir. So I'm thinking maybe they would have used this back before the lake was flooded back in the uh, 50s or 60s. Just a thought, but yeah, just wanted to show you how far we've made it. And one other thing, I mentioned the boulders earlier. The map said that we would be in uh, a hemlock and boulder area. Didn't see too many hemlocks, and then we came up a few more hundred feet, and we are surrounded by just a ton of really big hemlocks like the one in front of me, and then a ton of these tiny little saplings. I've never seen so many tiny sapling hemlocks before. Pretty cool. Also the state tree. So yeah, we're seeing a little bit of everything today. Well, I keep talking about the elevation on this trail and it seems the higher we get, the more things change. And just behind me here, you can see we're gonna head into, it looks like an old growth hemlock forest. And just behind me, we have a lot of hardwoods like oaks and maple, but uh, 
this is pretty cool and mysterious looking some fog rolling on through these hemlocks and uh yeah we got a nice little stream crossing just ahead all right so my camera died real quick but uh i was just saying that uh if you're not really prone to doing water crossings this trail probably isn't for you i think we're in the 20s now for stream crossings this one isn't too bad but we had some uh doozies yesterday but just keep that in mind if maybe you're thinking about doing this trail Well, we decided to take a little break. We have meandered our way away from the lake now. And one other thing I wanted to bring up is we haven't seen a single soul today on the trail. Yesterday, it was pretty crowded. We've probably seen, I don't know, 12 to 15 folks out uh, on the Morrison Trail. But we're still heading on through these giant boulders. And like I said earlier, it seems like they're getting bigger and bigger the further we get uphill. Some of these are the size of small houses and even cooler. These hemlocks just seem to love to grow out the top of these. Pretty much every giant boulder you look around, there's a hemlock growing out. One here, one there. You can see a couple up there, even this really big one. I mean, that one's a full-size tree just growing on top of these big sandstone blocks. So, yeah, just taking a little break, eating a little lunch, and uh, we'll get to the top here before you know it. All right, well, a few more stream crossings and a little bit more elevation. We have reached yet another kind of unique area along the trail. The higher we get, like I said, we've seen some hemlock, some hardwoods, and uh, we started below down by the lake with some jagger bushes and apple trees. Now, the higher we are, you can see we've made it to, uh, we'll call this the mountain laurel zone. So mountain laurel is popping up all over the hillsides here. Just interesting to see just, you know, how a few hundred feet in elevation can just change the uh, entire view and outlook of the trail here. You can see hemlocks, tons of tiny little saplings popping, or popping up, as well as uh, your occasional mountain laurel. And it looks like the further we go up, the more and more laurel we'll run into. So yeah, it's a day of elevation here on Maxim Outdoors. All right, well, here comes Chris. Nice look at the uh, hillside there. And it looks like uh, we're in for a treat now. It looks like the rest of the trail should be relatively flat. I don't see any major hills up ahead. But as I say that, it's starting to drizzle again on us. The rain was supposed to be done at 11. But uh, that's what happens when you hike with Maxim Outdoors. We'll bring the rain. I know hiker dude dad likes to bring the stake. I bring the rain. So uh, yeah, we're gonna keep heading on through these Mount Laurel and eventually we'll link up with another trail junction here.
Alrighty folks, well we have made it to our next trail junction. As you can see, the start of the Black Bear Trail. Heads on right, we're gonna continue on straight, but I figured uh, this would be a good time to sign off for this video. We got about a mile left. I'd rather do an intro in the middle of the woods than at a parking lot, but uh, yeah, another backpacking trip down, uh, hanging out with, uh, hiking with Ricky. Don't forget to check out his channel. You can see his own spin on these videos. They're awesome videos. Give them a check out if you aren't already or you haven't already. And uh, yeah, we're gonna head on back down. We got a mile left. What a, what a day and what a trip. Uh, yesterday, we did a little bit of everything, making some uh, food over the, the campfire, did a little fishing, seen some wildlife, some bald eagles. Couldn't really uh, ask for, for anything better. Camping, backpacking in the middle of the winter. And uh, yeah, so. That's going to be it. We're wrapping up the video. And uh, if you aren't already, make sure you're subscribed because next week we are heading up to none other than Ricketts Glen State Park. So we'll see you there.